a lot about uh, task files, and uh, it's about a little bit of introduction. So I'll just skip this one. So this is just me. Uh, so my name is Tanha, and my surname is Altman. I work as a software engineer, and uh, my GitHub is Mr. Wokol, and I have also a blog about uh, my experiences, and uh, it's you can find for in, in the wokolrelates.com. So um, what's a task file? Uh, as a task file is essentially a, a YAML file that we uh, use it to orchestrate tasks. And the tasks are basically some of the commands that you can bundle. And uh, it's essentially like a, a standard make file that you can use, but it's in a more uh, descriptive format that you can transitionally use and also make sure that uh, developer local ex experience that is, is similar to what you run in your CI CD pipeline. And uh, it's also internally powered by uh, MVDSH, uh, which works for Q. Uh, and also, it uses a slim fork of Mastermind Sprig. Uh, it's a slim fork because um, Sprig is something like you have go template functions that are pre made for you. And it makes it easy if you are using a uh, task file. And task file also supports bash, uh, other POSIX shells, and uh, other other shell formats. Um, it's not unfortunately limited to bash and other things, but uh, you can the, the, the good the good the good side of this thing is if you're on Windows, you don't have to install any other software. You can just use the task file, and if you have binary, it will just work fine out of the box. Um, you can how to how to install is like very straightforward. You can have pre-built binaries, or you can do source installation if you have a go in your uh, in your laptop, which I assume everyone does. Um, and you can also use GitHub Action. Uh, this is uh, something done by our Ardu Arduino team. Uh, they have created the custom GitHub Action, but you can also create your own GitHub Action or anything as a CI/CD. Um, you can set up the ta tasks as I mentioned declaratively. Uh, you have to follow up the a YAML naming convention uh, for your file extensions. Um, you can run multiple tasks at once, and um, also it's there's a there's a tip that you can define a default task. When you run a task, it will run the uh, the default task. Um, generally, developers use this to, to run the task L, uh, which lists all of the short descriptions of available tasks in that file, which is like a shortcut. And silent option is something for uh, not outputting commands, uh, which is already written before. And this is a quick start that, that I have prepared. Um, it's just you write your description uh, under the tasks, and you can define a default task, which is just going to be task command, and uh, that will be just very uh, easy to uh, easy to execute. And if you run task hello, that will be something uh, that runs that task. If you you can move, you can run multiple tasks like task hello there. It's like a piping the multiple commands uh, just sequentially. Uh, it's very practical. And the second thing is like environment variables. You can handle environment levels at task level or the global level of the file. So you don't have to uh, write things, many things at a single file. Uh, it also supports .mv, .mv files, uh, which could be useful if you are doing some integration testing or other things as well. And this is the example about the environment variables. Uh, just to define, uh, you can either use a, a like environment variable or you can use Go template variables, which accesses the same thing. Uh, so this one is the little bit default. Yeah, it uses default value, and um, if you didn't define the bar, and you can just define an environment variable about the bar, and that will just use that thing. Um, dynamic variables is just the same thing, similar thing, but it's just for completed variables. So this gives us more, uh, more uh, the place for you to write your variables, and you can calculate them rather than doing in the command section, which is going to be your uh, something main about the task. It's kind of kind of preferred if you're using something completed variable. You can do that rather than doing in the command line section. So this just will give you like whatever your architecture is. And as we mentioned before, it does support Go template syntax. So you can do anything that you can do with Go templates. Uh, can be useful for accessing your OS or architecture 
anything you can use, and the templates functions are provided by Spring. So this is what you can do. If you're on Windows machine, um, it will uh, echo the blue that of screen, uh, which is something that can happen in Windows, but yeah. Yeah, this is the, uh, the demo for that one. So I'm on Linux machine, so that, that just does the Linux output. But if you're on Windows, it will do the Windows. Yeah, the, the, the one killer feature is that there is a parallel execution for dependencies, so you can define a parallel task flow where you, you, you will specify dependencies, and those dependencies will run in parallel uh, depending on how many cores you have. Um, under the hood, it, it uses coroutines, uh, as you may be aware of. Um, so one thing, one crucial thing is if you run uh, hello, if, if, you, if, if one of these dependencies fail, your main task will not run. So be careful about what you specify as a parallel execution. Because not everything has to be parallel. And as you as you can see, it's going to be out of order. Uh, so that's something you may you may need to pay attention as well. Um, there's also something called summaries and namespaces. Uh, summaries are just long descriptions. You may not want to use it, but sometimes it's ideal to use it. Uh, personally, I prefer descriptions, but if you want to give some more business uh, business documentation or something like that, you can uh, specify summaries. Um, namespaces is basically like giving a, some sort of domain or some sort of namespace that other tools use, like uh, if you have ever used something like rake, rake files, um, so it just gives you a place for namespaces. So these are the examples for summary and uh, the commands that we can run. And we are using namespaces, as you can see, Docker is a namespace here, so when you specify the column. And that just runs this one. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the one that the last thing is like you can specify uh, includes, uh, which is a way to uh, put your task files into a nested directories. You may not want to do that, but this actually a uh, reason behind the namespace as well. So if you have a subfolder, you will look into that subfolder, and that will be something very useful. And you, you may want to call the tasks from the sub sub task files, sub children mm -hmm. of task files, and call the parent one. So that's very convenient as well. But it might not be for everyone. So just be careful because you don't really, uh, you know, multiply the make uh, the other uh, files in your project uh, for your pipeline, maybe for your project structure. But it supports that, and it uses namespaces like the column uh, syntax. So if you have a, something about documentation that will be docs column something or docker uh, column something. So you can run the tasks under that file and we don't have to use namespace a lot. Um, the common use cases we have had before is that um, you can have like formats, uh, linting generated. So the, the best case we, we found in the production is that we have a linter tool and every, every project has its own linter version that they, that they use. So it's sometimes convenient to uh, make a ta task task, <laughs> and you can go, go on the linter by saying task get linter. Um, that will just get you the linter. Uh, but you have to specify the version maybe. Uh, we use the latest one, but obviously every project can depend on the variable. Um, thanks for listening. That's pretty much it. Uh, if you want to get more information, you can look into task file out there or the GitHub uh, repository, which is maintained by uh, Andre. I'm very nearing, uh, so he's very active, so we welcome everything.